How happy are you right now? How happy do you think your parents were at your age? What about your grandparents? What about your great-grandparents? Short of getting a time machine, it seems like it would be very difficult for us to find out the answer to that question. But that's exactly the sort of question that I hope to be able to address right now. We have centuries of data for national income, but we have virtually no data for national happiness. The way we collect national happiness data is to ask people, how happy are you? And we can't do that 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 200 years ago. So we had to think a little bit outside the box. And what we decided to do was to use some insights from psychology and from computational linguistics. Take words, billions of words. For each individual word, we attach a number to that word, and that number measures how happy the word makes you feel. Words like vacation make you feel very happy. Words like murder probably don't make you feel very happy. And we generate a weighted average of all the words used by millions of books millions of newspapers spanning hundreds of years and spanning many different languages. That index is the first of its kind. It's a genuine attempt to understand how happy the nation was in 1800, in 1850, in 1950, in 2000. So we saw a number of, I think, interesting things. We see periods of intense unhappiness during World War I, World War II, bursts of happiness in the late 50s, when the ration comes to an end, and when Britain never had it so good, according to Harold Macmillan. And then we see a slow decline into unhappiness at the period known as the winter of discontent, the winter of unhappiness. Happiness is a relative concept. People are happy when they feel that it couldn't possibly get any better. They're sad when they think that they've just come through a terrible period of time and things are going to get worse. National health is one of the single biggest drivers of national happiness. And that makes sense in an advanced, relatively wealthy country. National income is also important, but it takes really a lot of national income to make the nation happier. Our data suggests that avoiding one year of war is worth about the same as a 40% rise in national income. When you think about your children, your grandchildren, we now know that what's going to make them happy perhaps isn't so much getting wealthier, getting richer, but staying healthy and avoiding conflict.